being new to the hobby and seeing a lot of other people that have been getting into the hobby as well, there's a lot of questions that I know I initially had, things I was looking for that even when I wasn't sure what I was looking for. And what I'd like to do is take a couple moments to kind of go through some of these things uh, that I've encountered and even the thought process I had going through them so that maybe I can save some other people, you know, the burden of pain or even having to go through the, tr the same trials and tribulations. So getting into the hobby, one of the first things that most people try to avoid in the wizard, and, and you know I did this, okay? The wizard will resolve for you is having to know how to solder, right? Me, I always tell people I'm not an electronics guy. I'm a software guy. I have spent over a decade as a software engineer, uh, working in many different environments, many different scenarios for a handful of different companies. Um, but my focus was always software, and hardware did not come easy to me um, because it's not just the soldering, it's, you know, understanding how all the, the electronics work. With that said, a lot of the components in this hobby apply the same way computers do. Not that you can't find a way to make exceptions to everything, um, but what I mean is anybody who's ever put a computer together, it's not rocket science. And people that want to make themselves feel a little smarter by saying that they put computers together or upgrade computer components. It's like Legos. Everything only fits in one place. Not that you can't make accidents happen um, by being careless or not doing your research, but essentially everything fits in one place. So once you've come to grips with the inevitability that you are going to solder, it is going to happen. The first thing you're going to have to do is get supplies. And the first thing you're going to need is a soldering iron. Now, the way I approach everything is I don't want to spend a bunch of money on it, right? And like most other people, I have a Weller soldering iron sitting out right now in the shed. That 60 watt, not variable temp, but it works. And I'm going to tell you that you can use it, but I don't think you should. One of the hardest things to manage for somebody that's just learning how to do this is how to manage your temperatures. And that's why this is so important. This is a variable temperature soldering iron, okay, that I picked up for right around $15 off Amazon Prime. Um, I will be linking to all the things that I show you in Amazon or other places, but variable temp soldering iron, you can change the tips. This has been wonderful for me. Absolutely wonderful. I mean, world of difference. This, I really think, has enabled me how to learn to solder properly. Um, with the knowledge I gained from this and using this as a tool, I could probably use other irons now, but I was having a hell of a time doing it before. Okay, so this is a Tazi Home or Tazi Home Soul Rep 2000. Okay, and it will work wonderfully for you. Now, after I got that, you know, I go through the process and I'm like looking at these stands. Okay, so I'm going to save you. I'm going to kind of head this one off a little bit. We've got this. Okay, this just comes out, just a little cup. Well, okay, it did come out. I uh, used some double-sided tape to really make sure it was stuck in there good. But you need somewhere to put your hot soldering iron. You know, I was like, oh, I'll just set it on the desk and leave burn marks places. Or, you know, I can hold on to it while I'm doing other things. No, one, you probably can, but you really don't want to. So don't spend the money, just get a cheap stand. You know, everything in this comes out one way or another. Uh, this here, you know, you buy little wads of this stuff and just do what you need to do with it. Um, but that's for, you know, aiding and keeping your tip clean, which will be covered in another video coming up because this is just going to be 
focused around the, the objects you use as tools, um, I'm going to go ahead and put together a short series or a short video for how to fundamentally solder. So now that you've got a soldering iron and you have somewhere to put it, especially while it's hot, what you're going to need is flux. Okay. Now I'm sure somebody here is going to tell me that this is not the right flux to use or that I shouldn't be using it, something of that nature. And I'm not going to say you're wrong. There's a lot of people that know a lot more about this than I do. But I'm going to tell you this has been working very well for me. Okay, Because one of the things you're going to have to learn to do with your soldering iron is to keep it tinned. Okay, And what that means is that the tip of your iron will oxidize. You can kind of see that. Anyway, what you can see is that there's a lot of parts of the soldering iron that look dirtyish. Okay, and that that's oxidation. So the process of tinning removes that oxidation. And there's a couple different ways you could do it. And the first way, not knowing any better, that I went about doing it was through a product like this. Okay, now I don't know if you can see this or appreciate just how small this is. And when you look in here, I mean, the tin's really only half full, okay? What this is, is a compressed powder mixture of flux and solder. And this little thing here is a complete waste of money. Because I found that you can do just as good of a job, if not better, using this. Okay? This is just flux paste. Okay? Now this whole jar costs as much as that little tin. And it's more versatile. I can use it for more things. So I would say pick this up. All right? Now the other item you will need to tin your tip and to do any type of soldering is solder. Okay? Now let me get something out. You know, everybody walks through Walmart or Lowe's and you find these soldering kits and they come with a cheap soldering iron, maybe some other tools and things. And then one of the other things that come in there is this little spool of solder. And this stuff is complete junk. It is not 60-40-10 solder. It needs to be 60-40-10 solder. Okay? Okay, let me correct it. It does not need to be, but you are going to save yourself a lot of hassle by making sure that it is. You can buy these at Walmart for three to five dollars and it's going to get you next to nowhere. Now these cost a little bit. I want to say between nine and twelve dollars for the spool. But you get so much more and it's good stuff. And the reason I have two spools is I have a one millimeter spool and I have a one and a half millimeter spool. Because one of the things I realized was that I could use a lot less of solder for large soldering jobs using the larger solder and then I could keep this small stuff in reserve well not in reserve but I could reserve it for the smaller jobs do yourself a favor get some solder real solder and then which moves us on to smaller tools you gotta have wire cutters you're going to be cutting wire. You need wire cutters. These are cheap. I wish I had gotten the better ones. Uh, these got very dull very fast and they become very, very hard to use when they're dull. You have to work too hard to, to get anything done, much like a knife. Okay? Same thing. Nobody wants to use a dull knife. As soon as you go from using dull knives to using sharp knives, you start to get a deep appreciation for how much easier it is to cut. Right? And then you're going to need some uh, pliers of some type. Okay? Spend a little money, not excessive amounts of money, just get a decent set. I will be buying more of these. These, not so much, okay? These work fine. But wire cutters, get yourself a good set of wire cutters.
Likewise, you're going to want a solder sucker and or some solder wick. Now, I find that both have their applications. I don't necessarily think one, you know, that one is best used over the other or, you know, you can use them both for just about anything. Uh, I find myself using this a lot more than I thought I would, but this still comes in really handy. So solder wick is just a braid. I know you won't be able to see it with my crummy camera. It's just a braid of copper. And, you know, there's a technique, you know, you dip it in some flux, put it on top of whatever uh, the solder pad or the solder that you're trying to remove, stick your soldering iron on top of that, and it wicks it up. Okay, solder wick. It just sucks up the solder that you don't want wherever it's at. I find that this seems to work a little more easily and reliably for what I've been doing, but I've got an appreciation for both. Okay, so you're going to want both of those things. And then I'm going to throw the obligatory electrical tape and liquid, elect, uh, liquid electrical tape and things like that. You wouldn't think, but isopropyl alcohol, and get the high concentration. So your solder, you know, is a mixture of solder and tin, and in its core, it has rosin flux. So it has this, okay? What does flux do? Flux removes the oxidation from the metals that you are attempting to solder together. Solder will not stick to oxidized metal. Basically, that oxidization layer, that oxidized layer. Flux allows that to burn off, leaving only the pristine metal behind so that the solder can uh, fully adhere itself to those surfaces. That flux is acidic. It will break down the metal on your parts and this is how you clean it up. A little bit of this on a Q-tip goes a real long way. Which takes us to wire. Okay, You're going to take a look at this stuff when I tell you what it costs or when you look it up and you're going to go, oh man, I don't want to buy that stuff. That's expensive. I'm going to tell you, save yourself some trouble. Now, some of this, like, like this here, this is just entirely too big to use almost for most purposes. And then this is an even lower gauge, which makes it even bigger. And again, I just bought it because it was a collection of stuff, right? And then this. But go ahead and get yourself some wire. You're going to need wire. You are going to need wire. You cannot strip enough wire off all the other things you're using to do what you're trying to do for everything. But that said, I do save all my little bits of wire and things because I'm able to recycle quite a bit of them. Part of the reason that wire is so expensive is because it is silicon wire. Okay, What that means is that the, the insulation on it is made of silicone. It's going to come in real handy, real handy when you're soldering because anybody who's soldered with PVC or plastic coated wire has noticed that as soon as that wire gets hot that PVC or plastic starts shrinking and it runs right up the wire and it leaves a lot more of the bare wire exposed than what you anticipated. The silicone wire will not do that. The last item I'm going to cover for right now is what we call a helping hands because, and you'll see that I left something in here so you can see, it will hold things for you. Okay, you're going to sit there and you're going to say, oh, I can make this work with a clothespin or a binder clip or something of that nature. Um, I'm going to tell you, no, you can't. And I'm also going to tell you when you buy a helping hands, I don't think you should buy this one. This thing's a complete piece of junk. The base is not heavy enough for everything that's on this. I think this magnifying glass I'm going to be removing because I just don't use it. Um, the clips, most of the time, two is enough, but there are times where I wished I had more. And I wish they were longer, the, that the arms were longer, and I wish that there was more of them. And so you can find helping hands in a different format that have three or four arms that have a much larger base than this, 
that are going to sit in place much better, that are going to give you a solid foundation to do all your soldering. You should not attempt to solder without some sort of helping hands. Go ahead and do it. If it makes you happy to try to save that $6. But you're going to find that your life is a lot better with this than without. So that there covers most of the fundamental items uh, that have really made a difference in my attempts at soldering. Okay, They have made the difference between me getting really good solder joints, really poor solder joints, having a really easy time doing it, or having to work way too hard. So I hope it helps somebody out there. And if you have any questions, let me know. If you appreciate this content, I'm going to ask you to like it. If you've seen a couple things you like, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be getting some more flight videos up soon. I've just had a bout of weather and work, you know, all the other things that happen. And then I've had a couple crashes. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Happy crashing.